Hi, welcome everyone. We're here today with a very special guest, uh, a dear friend of the orchestras from the Syracuse Symphony Foundation. Um, please welcome Al sorry, Alice Kendrick to, the, uh, uh, to our Zoom here today. So welcome, Alice. Such a thrill and a pleasure to have you with us. John, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, Alice, you and I have a connection um, that we, I just recently found out about, but my sister who teaches at JD High School was under your, um, your leadership, correct? Yes, I was uh, a teacher at JD for many, many years and I was superintendent at JD for almost 25 years. So I have a very long history and your sister has been a part of our high school community for many years. Well, she just loves it there. And, and another um, longtime friend of mine, Eric Ormond is the, uh, Social, one of the social studies teachers at the high school. And Eric and I have known each other since kindergarten. So it's a, it's a fun connection that we have. But um, today we'd like to talk about kind of, you know, the, the Syracuse Symphony Foundation and its endeavors and kind of what, you know, what is it involved in and what are some of the kind of support uh, systems that you provide for not only Symphoria, but, but for the community as well. About 20 years ago, Sean, a small group of community leaders came together, it's led by David Ridings, and they wanted to develop a plan. They all love symphonic music, and they believe strongly that access to live symphonic music in central New York was really pivotal to the life in this area. So out of that discussion came a plan to develop a structure, a not-for-profit, which became the Syracuse Symphony Foundation. It's total function and mission is to provide support, financial support to organizations that provide live symphonic music in the central New York region. Been doing it for 20 years. And we are delighted that symphonic music is alive and well and just doing amazing work here in central New York. Well, I know uh, the support of the SSF was so integral and in getting Symphoria up and running and we're approaching, we're almost at 10 years now already, which is really remarkable from literally being like a Phoenix and coming out of uh, the ashes. And, but, you know, we had a, a wonderful base of, of musicians who have really um, been dedicated to central New York and, and been involved in symphony music here for decades. And so to have like that bit of a bridge to, to start this wonderful orchestra off with um, was again, no, no, you know, small surprise because the Syracuse Symphony Foundation was just so supportive in, in getting this, this ship in the, in the water, you know, breaking the champagne glass over the hull and, and getting this thing moving. And I've been so thrilled to be a part of uh, the first performance when we, we didn't even know what the name was going to be yet. And, um, and, and to be able to go from that performance to where we are now with a, a, a beautiful full season, a wonderful music director, Larry Lowe, um, and a wonderful board of directors and the support again from the Syracuse Symphony Foundation. You know, a lot of hard work, as you know, went in to make this a reality. And, and to echo your comments, the, you know, it really is important to provide um, quality symphony live music here in central New York. And, you know, we don't just perform downtown. Our Sparks concerts get us out into the community a little bit and some in the churches with the casual series. And then also we do some runouts for our holiday pops, um, and, and the like, Herkimer uh, gets involved in that and the surrounding areas. So it's just, it, we couldn't do it without you, Alice, in the foundation. So we're, we're just eternally um, grateful. Now, being in central New York um, for um, quite some time, what, what did the symphony mean to you? You know, going to concerts and, you know, maybe some of your highlights of, of wonderful concerts in the past that have really um, kind of uh, piqued your interest and, and stuck with you. Well, we've been a subscriber to whatever symphony was in the area for actually my entire adult life. So it's been a part of my life as an adult forever. Any particular concert kind of jump out at you or it doesn't have to be your favorite, just one that maybe, you know, sticks in your mind more than others? Um, I have to say the piece that most sticks in my mind was the opportunity I had a few years ago when James LeDewitt's eighth grade orchestra had the opportunity to perform in the Civic Center mm. prior to a Pops concert. You know, that's one of our um, uh, community spotlight concert series that we used to do at the Civic Center. And it was just a wonderful way to bring the super talented 
musicians in our high schools and, and, and junior highs into the big stage. I remember when I went to high school and, and at Solvay High School, we ended up, our jazz band played at the Civic Center. And I remember being on that stage. It seems so big when you're like 16 and 17 years old. And now that, you know, I'm lucky enough to be the pops conductor for the orchestra, it, it's like completely different eyes now. Um, and this is my workspace versus it was the first chance to get out and, and play in the Civic Center. And it was uh, just a wonderful moment of uh, kind of discovery for me to see what these you know, wonderful symphony musicians have enjoyed, you know, throughout their careers um, being at this. So along those lines, um, why, why do you feel like symphony music is important here in central New York? I have to go back to my parents were raised in the depression era and they instilled in us the incredible importance of music to everyday life, particularly in hard times. So when we, we're old enough to have the opportunity to get involved in music in schools. They made sure that we were a part of that. I started out playing the clarinet, moved on to the oboe and then to the bassoon um, and all of our family did that. But the reason why that was possible is because of the support that we had in the community mm. for music and the importance of music in everyone's lives. It brings a sense of joy, it brings a sense of energy, sometimes a sense of peace. But to me, most importantly, it brings a sense of community. There is such community around music, and I think particularly symphonic music. It's part of every large event, and it makes events memorable and things that we remember for a lifetime. And I think that's why I was so taken by the eighth grade orchestra participating in the Civic Center. It just brought to life the importance of, of children experiencing that and carrying that with them for their entire lives. So to me, it's such an important part of life, both the exciting parts and the parts that are difficult. It just gets us through and motivates us. And I can't imagine life without it. So it's a pleasure to be a part of an organization that can provide that. And to me, Symphoria just represents um, the epitome of that. It's such an amazing group of musicians. The staff is unbelievable. They have worked so hard to develop the highest quality music in some really challenging times, particularly this year. And it's really helped get us all through and will continue to do that. So I think that's why it's so important. Well, and, and one of the things that we've been uh, fortunate to be able to continue is our wonderful Symphoria Youth Orchestra program where you know we're able to foster the best of the musicians here in central New York and give them a stage to play when you know all the music programs in the schools were went dark because of you know health protocols etc um, you know or performing on zoom to a click track and then you know the director puts it all together piece by piece it's not really what we're wired to do we're wired to be on stage and to perform for audience members and you know, for us, we've had the wonderful opportunity to have a home at Inspiration Hall, thanks to the Fang family's generosity and the support of the Syracuse Symphony Foundation. I mean, all this comes into play for us to be able to keep the music going. And one of the things with the, um, in regular times with the Syracuse, or the Symphoria Youth Orchestra, is we have a side-by-side -side concert where we're able to bring you know, the, the wonderful mu young musicians alongside our wonderful young at heart musicians in the orchestra. And I was fortunate to uh, conduct that concert uh, a couple of years ago. And just to see the, the energy and the life, like you were saying, that music brings into these kids' lives. And, you know, it's not about necessarily becoming a professional musician is why you study music. It's really about fostering that and getting that music in your blood and in your veins, because, you know, uh, it's just as important to enjoy it and be a patron as it is to be on stage and performing. And, you know, the folks at Symphoria, you know, our staff and our musicians really understand that. So many of our uh, players in the orchestra have budding private studios in the area where they're, you know, hands on, on the ground, feet on the ground with our wonderful, uh, you know, next generation of, of musicians. And, and that just doesn't happen without the support of the Syracuse Symphony Foundation. So, um, you know, it's hard to believe that we're, we're slowly approaching 10 years here, I think, we're nine years is next year. And then the year after that will be 10 years. 
And if, you know, you told us all when the, after that first concert that we would be, you know, even stronger today than we were that first day, it, it's really quite a remarkable feat. Um, and, you know, it's certainly because of the, largely in part because of the Syracuse Symphony Foundation. So um, what, you know, we're looking up at the summer season, we're hoping to kind of, you know, slowly welcome back folks outside. Obviously we have a little bit more flexibility. Um, have you been to some of our July 4th shows and, and is that kind of part of your summer tradition and, uh, you know, some of the other community shows that we do as well? We haven't been to any of the 4th of July shows. We have a camp in Northern New York, so we're up there most of the summer. I have been to the concerts that are outside in the town of Fayetteville. Oh, yeah. And that also provides, again, a great opportunity for community. We were there the last time it was presented, which I guess was a year ago last summer. Mm -hmm. And it was great to see people of all ages uh, just gathering together. Many people that hadn't met each other before were sitting next to each other, park benches and getting to know each other. It just was a wonderful experience, very different from the Civic Center. And again, that's what makes symphonic music so wonderful. It brings everybody together in a whole variety of venues and just makes life wonderful. Well, I couldn't agree more, Alice. I, and I can't thank you enough for uh, spending some time with us today chatting about uh, the foundation and what uh, music of Symphoria means to you. And I know um, we're thrilled as we um, kind of bring, a, bring to a close this virtual season that we've had. Um, we have um, very high hopes and, and wishes to be able to welcome our patrons back into the Civic Center. Um, hopefully, you know, at some, at some point next season, we're not quite sure how that all goes, but um, with some of the, uh, the recent uh, announcements of health restrictions easing and allowing people to gather, we're hoping that that'll translate into our world and really be able to give that first line experience. You know, one of the things I always talk about when I talk about music advocacy is, you know, take music away from movies, take music away from your car and the radio, take music away from, you know, being even in an elevator. And it's, a, it's remarkable how much music really touches us. So with Symphoria being able to play live for our patrons and our audience is just such a special experience. And one that, you know, obviously uh, is still near and dear to your heart, um, being a, a lifelong Central New York resident and, and having the orchestra a part of your life. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for your efforts in making orchestra music a part of so many people's lives here in Central New York. So. Um, thanks again, Alice, and I hope you enjoy our, our concert, our best of Symphoria Pops, and uh, should be a, a wonderful way to say thank you to all of our patrons again, and, and thank you again, Alice, for joining us. Well, thank you. I am looking forward to a wonderful concert and a fantastic season next year. Sounds like a plan. I'm in. <laughs>